Now, The Marriage of Figaro is based on a famous play by a famous French playwright, Beaumarchais. And this play was a revolutionary play at the time, which caused a lot of distress. Why? Because it is just before the French Revolution, a critical look at the aristocracy. Now, that too is a trilogy. The Barber of Seville, The Marriage of Figaro, and then a third play which has never been as successful called La Mère Coupable, which means the guilty mother. We see the same characters, Figaro, of course, the most famous. We see the young Rosina falling in love in the Barber of Seville. She's now the countess because she marries the Count of Almaviva. And the Count, of course, was wooing her in the Barber of Seville. He is now married, of course, and has a tendency to wander. And, of course, that's what the stories are about. And there's a wonderful... There are two couples, the Count and the Countess. There is Figaro, who's going to marry Susanna. And as her name suggests from the Bible, she is chaste and faithful. And we're going to see men misbehave and be humbled at the end of the opera and forgiven by their women. And it is, of course, a very restorative opera. I think it is one of the most life-affirming operas with its delightful comedy, but at the same time, very sharp social criticism, which when you think back to its position just before the French Revolution, it's a very important moment. Mozart's genius is revealed in this opera at its absolute zenith. I think it's one of the favorite pieces I have to have ever conducted. I could conduct it a hundred times a year if you told me I had to. And one of the reasons is from the first note of the overture to the end of the opera, it is seamless perfection. And I always feel that the life-affirming for us of the end of the opera, I come out ready to start again. Would we'll do two performances in a night if you'd let me, because the energy and the life force that comes out of it is one of the most extraordinary works in the entire repertory.